Okay, in this mini tutorial, we're going to focus on the dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway. Um, and this is the system which the central nervous system uses to carry information to the brain concerned with fine touch, two point discrimination, um, and vibration sense. Um, and this is actually um, quite a sophisticated sensory system, giving us very rich information concerning objects that we might pick up uh, and feel. So the way we're going to approach this um, is a standard way that, that I tend to use to draw the pathways and what we're going to do first is draw the whole central nervous system um, in a cartoon diagrammatic form. Okay so here are the cerebral hemispheres, All right. here's the brainstem, the midbrain, pons and medulla, the midbrain, the pons and the medulla going down into the cord and we're going to make the cord quite wide because there's a lot of circuitry going on in the spinal cord um, we're going to indicate um, just vaguely the midline because it's very important that you consider the midline when drawing any neuroanatomical pathway especially when we're talking about pathways crossing over so let's start off by thinking about a sensory neuron, maybe which is carrying vibration sense um, from one of the lumbar dermatomes. Okay, so there's a receptor out in one of the lumbar dermatomes, talks to a sensory neuron, a first order sensory neuron whose cell body is in the dorsal root ganglion. And this neuron projects into the spinal cord and this first order neuron follows the principles of the sensory system that we've already defined and it ascends up through the cord like this on the same side until it gets to the medulla okay and when it gets to the medulla it synapses all right so there's a synapse there and that synapse is onto a second order neuron and I'm going to use the same colour here for this pathway from a lumbar dermatome and the reason being that we're going to look at how the topographical organisation of the cord builds up with respect to the dorsal columns. So this is our first order neuron, it synapses onto a second order neuron and you'll recall that the second order neuron is the one that decussates so this, this second order neuron sends its axon across the midline and that A sends all the way up to the thalamus okay so let's draw on the thalamus and we'll draw on one half of it here and one half of it there so there's the thalamus all right and our second order neuron has decussated. Its synapse is in the thalamus on a third order neuron. And that third order neuron projects to the sensory cortex. Now go back and think about your sensory homunculus. And you'll recall that if we're talking about a lumbar dermatome, i.e. a dermatome from the lower half of the body, those lumbar regions, those lower body regions are represented more medially. In the sensory cortex okay so we can see there um, the pathway for a lumbar dermatome and how that is represented in the somatosensory cortex so now what we're going to do um, is we're actually going to draw a cross section through the spinal cord at this level here okay and draw it just on the right hand side so here is a cross section through our lumbar spinal cord just there there's the central canal here's our dorsal horn our ventral horn our ventral horn our dorsal horn there um, we'll draw on the entry points for the dorsal and the ventral roots and we'll draw on those dorsal and ventral roots so here's our spinal nerve, the swelling for the dorsal root ganglion, and there's going into the dorsal root. Here's once again the rest of the dorsal root. Here's the ventral root coming back together to form the spinal nerve. 
And so we'll now draw on our primary sensory neuron in red. Here it is, it has entered. Its cell body was in the DRG. It went into the cord through the dorsal root and it went into the dorsal columns where it then stayed on the same side and ascended. Okay, so it's ascended there. And we're going to draw another level above this at the next stage. So now what we're going to do is you're going to use a different colour um, and we're going to use, um, let's use green. And we're going to use green to represent a cervical um, sensory neuron. So here's a sensory neuron supplying one of the cervical dermatomes. So here is a receptor out in one of the cervical dermatomes. Here is its cell body in a dorsal root ganglion. Okay. Here it is entering the cord. And this being the dorsal column pathway, it ascends ipsilaterally up to the medulla, okay, where it synapses. And it synapses on a second order neuron, which then proceeds to cross the midline up to the thalamus. When it gets to the thalamus, this second order neuron synapses and it synapses upon a third order neuron which projects to the appropriate part of the sensory cortex which deals with the cervical dermatomes. And you'll recall that the cervical dermatomes are dealing with, say, the neck and the upper limb and these are represented more laterally in the somatosensory cortex. One point um, I need to make to you um, before we move on another stage is what um what are these nuclei called where our first order neuron is synapsing well they do have specific names um the nucleus in the medulla where first order neurons from the lower half of the body synapse is called the gracile nucleus and the nucleus in the medulla where first order neurons from the upper half of the body synapse is called the cuneate nucleus okay so these are discrete nuclei within the medulla where our first order neurons synapse in the dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway now, having synapsed at these points here in the gray cell and cuneate nuclei, the second order neurons, as we said, cross the midline and ascend to the thalamus. And they form another bundle, another pathway running through the brainstem. Okay? And this pathway here that they form running through the brainstem is the medial lemniscus okay that is the medial lemniscus this pathway connecting the gracile and cuneate nuclei with the thalamus and you can see the medial lemniscus um, when you're looking at cross sections through the brainstem okay so we've cleared that up now let's um, examine a cross section through the cervical spinal cord at this level here Okay, so we're now going to draw a cross section through the cervical spinal cord. Um, so here we go. Central canal. Like that. Here is our red um, second order neuron from the lower half of the body ascending all the way up to the medulla and we're going to do the same thing that we did for the lumbar levels so we're going to create root entry points here where we're going to show the dorsal root ganglion there dorsal root the ventral root coming together to form the spinal nerve and we're going to show our green First order neuron from a cervical dermatome with its cell body in the DRG 
Then it's going to go into the chord and ascend ipsilaterally. Okay. Now, what I've demonstrated to you here is a very, very important aspect of the organisation of, well, CNS pathways in general. But we can use the dorsal column pathway as a specific example. You'll note um, that the red neuron um, entered the chord first at the lower levels, and then the green neuron was added on later at higher levels of the chord. And the green, the higher up the chord you go, the neurons get added on to the lateral aspect of the dorsal columns. Okay, so here's a lumbar um, neuron, here's a cervical neuron, and the higher up the chord you go, they get added on to the lateral aspect. So what we could actually do is generate a topographical or somatotopic map for the um, dorsal columns, where we would find that the lumbar region of the body is represented here, the thoracic region is represented there, and the cervical region is represented there. So in the dorsal column system, the axons are added laterally to the pathway. And this can have really important um, significance, particularly if we're thinking about um, central cord lesions, maybe, which grow from the centre outwards like this. So they might take out the lumbar region first, then the thoracic region, and only let, at the later stage affect the cervical region. So I hope this brief summary has proved useful for you. Um, and we'll do another one on the spinothalamic pathways. Okay, thanks.